Hey guys, really excited about this one. This is the Central Delaware Craft Beer Craft Brew Tour, and uh, we're going to be heading all over the state of Delaware, Central Kent County, and covering their breweries and wineries, and uh, showing you a little bit about what Delaware, ha Delaware has to offer. Whenever you're doing something like this, guys, please always have a designated driver and get home safe. So, it's the Craft Beer Craft Brew Tour. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so this is a real exciting one for me because it's Painted Stave Distillery in Smyrna, Delaware. This is a brand new operation with two really interesting guys here. And I've got Ron and Mike. So, Ron, Ron Gomes, does, who wants to go first? Mike? Mike? Okay. Yep. Mike, what a, what a pleasure. Mike Rasmussen uh, from Newark, Delaware. Yep. Uh, just starting this new entity here in, in Smyrna. I mean, it's really exciting. How did you get into this? I mean, this is a really big step. Um, you know, we're fortunate to have a lot of people who've kind of hoed this road before us. Um, the uh, craft beer, craft wine, those guys have done a great job of kind of setting the stage for people being interested in small batch, hand, handmade kind of stuff. Um, and I appreciated small beer and small wine quite a bit. Um, and as part of that appreciation, I started learning about people who are making spirits, um, doing it in a way that I thought was engaging and interesting. And um, from there, it was just it was book learning and it was meeting people in the industry to kind of convince me that this is something that would be fun to do. But Ron, how did, how did you? I mean, here's here's a PhD. I mean, th this kind of guy, Ron, over here. I mean, he's he's got a history with science. So there's, a, I'm sure there's a lot of that that goes into your productions. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. How did you get here from there, and uh, how does that impact your products? Yeah, um, my background as a scientist plays very well with what we do here. Um, at its very core, biology is what we do. Um, I got introduced to the idea of having my own craft distillery through a colleague, and um, that kind of was a spark that lit the fire that set me on a path similar to Mike, uh, touring other craft distilleries, um, uh, becoming very passionate about the creativity side of, of, of spirits, craft spirits, craft products. Um, how my background has in, will impact, or we hope to that it will impact our business here, is to use some of those tools that I did as, as a scientist, as a, a cell biologist, as well as a, a biochemist to um, impact our quality and um, uh, give us some quality control and, and some ability to, to put out unique uh, and interesting products. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's the history. It's a beautiful facility. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, so it's, uh, it's a recent opening. How long did it take you, you know, guys to get the facility and get it up and running? From the time we started moving walls in here, it's uh, about 10 months, really. So. Yeah. And that's uh, it, what, what's exciting for me to learn about this place as a history and then how that history carried through to the products. So I can't wait to go out and see, you know, the operation, what it looks like, you know, how you guys do it. Uh, so you can walk me through that step by step. But uh, let's let's cover a couple of your key products. What's your your, your signature products? What, what, are, what are they now? Sure. So right now, um, the first one, and this one I think is the closest tied to our building here, is um, Silver Screen Vodka. Um, the idea on this was we wanted to craft a, a great vodka that um, kind of and use it to tell the story of our building. So it's an exciting product. There's a lot of cachet behind it. Um, to us, there's a similarity there between that and the movies. And this was you it's know an old, movie. an old movie house. So you know there's a there's a kind of panache around that. And um, so we integrated that as part of this and kind of made it our our first product was silver screen vodka. Really nice. Can you cover the second one, Ron? Sure. Candy Man or Gin, we had a lot of fun with this label. It, it comes out of really uh, interacting with a lot of local folks here in town. Uh, the, the story for Candy Manor um, is really a direct uh, reflection of that conversation. So uh, we poke, it, poke fun with Candy Manor Gin, uh, small town lore, uh, kind of coming to life here, if you will, where the local candy store also sold a uh, little human companionship. So we had some fun with small town lore. But the gin itself is a contemporary style gin, um, very different than what most people know or what they think about uh, when they uh, think of gin, uh, where in this case, juniper is very much in the background. It's certainly a base component of all gins, but we bring forth other botanicals that we grow here locally um, lavender, uh, Delaware State Herb, Sweet Goldenrod to uh, help us characterize this gin. So it's it's uh, 
been a quite nice surprise for, for a lot of folks that come in and taste it. So Mike, take us through the process really quick so it all starts where? It all starts over here in our mashing tank. Okay. Um, really what we're doing is we're taking grain and breaking grain down into sugar. Um, that process is what we call mashing. That really, that starts with, with grinding grain in our mill, cooking it, and then converting the starches in there to sugars. And we use malted barley in order to do that conversion. Um, it takes a, about five or six hours total time to go through that process. Uh, step two. Step two, fermentation. Um, we pump out from our mashing ton over here into our fermenting tanks. This is where we add yeast to the process. Yeast eat that sugar we made in mashing and turn it into alcohol. Ethanol is the alcohol we want. And in three to five days, the yeast are going to eat up all of that sugar and give us what we call distiller's beer. That's what goes in the still. So if I was a brewery, I could stop there and give you a beer. Yeah, yeah. Ours is a little bit different because ours isn't filtered, but, but it's actually breweries mash and they ferment just like we do. We just, uh, a process is slightly different. So then from there, fermentation, we go where? Fermenter, fermentation, we go to distillation. So distillation really is all about separation. The alcohol has been created. What the still does is it separates alcohol out from everything else that's in that process. Um, and that's all done by boiling point. Ethanol boils at a lower temperature than water does. So we raise the temperature up. It turns that ethanol into vapor. And then we, we manipulate that vapor to make it stronger, depending on the product we're making, then condense it back down into liquid. That's our alcohol. That's an incredible uh, distiller over there. Yeah, it's a, a wonderful tool. We, we got to work with a great company out in Louisville, Kentucky, Vendome Copper and Brass Works, to make the still, design it. Um, they've been doing this for over 100 years. They build the big stills for Jim and Jack. Um, uh, you know, ours is you know, one of a kind. Everyone is a little bit different, um, but a, a wonderful tool. Um, we're also fortunate. We, we have one that we built ourselves. Um, her name is Sandy. She's our Franken still. Um, we use her to do test batches and experimental batches, things that we can kind of play around with and have a, have a little bit of fun with. Awesome. Awesome. I love the uh, lights on the wall, too. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that was actually one of those great finds for us. Um, those are the original wall sconces that were here in the theater back in the 40s. Um, they had been taken down, um, but fortunately, the, the folks who owned the building, while it was a plumbing supply store, um, had the, the mind to keep them, figuring somebody might like them someday. So we fixed them up, um, put some new lights in them, and uh, got them back up on the wall. You know, this is a part, this is a stop on the Good Libation Store. So do a web search on that, find out uh, all of the stops on the Good Libation Store. We've got four of the five, and so we'll be visiting all, you know, almost all of those places today. And uh, really excited to meet you guys, and thank you so much for appearing on the Limo Guys show. It really is a special. You're taking us to the next level. Thanks, guys. Yeah. This is um, a really interesting place where, where? We're at, we're in Marydell? Marydell. I mean, who would have thought there's a fully functional winery in Marydell? How long have you guys been here? Since November 1st of 2013. Since November, no, November 1st, of, it's easy for me to say that, November 1st, of 2013, yep. Harvest Ridge Winery. This is pretty cool. I mean, this is amazing what you guys are doing here. What's special for me is there's history here, number one, number two. Uh, your process. You go from your own grapes off of your own vines, and so, and then, you, you, I mean, we're producing wine out of here. What, what types of wine do you, do you produce here? We have some Chardonnay, V&A, Malbec, Merlot, Cab Sauv, Chamberson, Vidal Blanc, and the list goes on. So all of those grapes are outside for us to see. That's correct. That's crazy for me because everyone else, uh, well, not everyone else, but a lot of the, other, the wineries around here, they're importing their grapes and then producing their product, right? Yep, that's true. This, this is a special place. So not only do we do, are we a fully functional winery here, mm -hmm. uh, we also do what, events? We have events this weekend. We have a food truck competition coming up. Um, we host people's weddings, birthday parties, you name it. It's so awesome. Uh, I can't, really can't wait to get a chance to walk around here and see that. So are we brewing today? Right next door, they are working on our newly released mead, or new to be released mead. Okay, and what does that mean for a guy who has no idea what that is? It is a honey wine, like the Vikings used to drink. <laughs> so I feel like, if I, all right, so uh, no, I'm just a limo guy. I'm not a Viking, but uh, I really am interested in this now. So, you know, we can go over and talk to those guys over there and gals over there doing that. 
Probably. So with the winemaker at at Harvest Ridge Winery, and it is Milan. Milan, yep. How do how do you how do you pronounce your last name? Lajon. Lajon. Very easy for you to say. Right. <laughs> and so, what what are we working on today? What's the project for today? Today we're fermenting uh, honey into mead wine. So it's a long, complicated process. It's very thick. It's very sweet. It takes a long time to ferment. Usually for a white wine, we can ferment it essentially in about two weeks. But for mead, since it's such a sweet substance, that you actually have to ferment it for at least a month or two. Okay. And uh, so that's not the only product that you guys provide. What other products are you, are you specializing here at Harvest Ridge? We're specializing in pretty much everything. <laughs> right now we have uh, 10 different varieties of grapes. We have uh, Vidal. We have Chardonnay. We have Viognier, which is a southern French variety grape. Uh, we have Malbec, Merlot, Cab Sauve, Chamberson, and we have Muscat coming out as well. And we're doing quite a bit of fruit wines as well. Apple, peach, uh, we're doing blackberry and blueberry fruit wines. So fruit wines are coming back in popularity, and we're actually focusing on that right now. The mead is just a little small specialty that we're trying out right now. And so what's, what's the significance behind the mead? The mead is actually a very, very old drink from northern Europe, uh, typically from Scandinavia. Uh, it's traditional, traditional English uh, style mead that we're making as well. So, yeah, it's a dessert, dessert wine that has a little specialty to it as well. Yeah. What's your, what is your heritage? How did you get into this? This is a really interesting story to me. Out in Marydell, we've got all this, all this wonderful, uh, these wonderful grapes growing here. Uh, we've got this wonderful winemaker and this excellent facility. So, what is your history? My parents are originally from Croatia, and they immigrated to Canada. And I just got involved in the wine industry about seven years ago. And I've been making wine and traveling and having a great time since. It's a great industry to be in. So the, the historic significance of this is what? What this is, this is the original witness stone that was placed here by Mason and Dixon when they first came through and surveyed the area. Uh, they were the ones who actually set this in place. And then by the tree over there is the actual monument then, uh, which was later placed then. So the 47, is that, is that the 47? Number 47. Marker from number 47, and that carries in through your logo, right? So if you check out your logo at harvestridge.com, uh, you know, you, harvestridgewinery.com, excuse me, please forgive me. But if you check that out on webpage, you can see their logo. It is really great. It's, uh, it's got that wonderful tree, uh, you know, about the roots that are associated with the tree driving into the ground and family. And, you know, all of that is, is uh, incorporated into that logo. And also that marker number is. So we'll get you a picture of that, you know, soon, which is really great. That's one of the things that I really um, enjoy about every place that we're visiting today is... Um, you know what? There's a lot of history, and uh, you guys are doing your best to carry that through the product to the product. But, you know, hey, it, it all means something, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, that, that's the whole point. I mean, there, there's such great history in this area, and, I mean, you might as well showcase it then. We got Lauren, Lauren Bigelow, Lauren Bigelow, Fordham and Dominion Brewing in Dover, Delaware. Um, done a couple of things with this young lady. She's awesome. This facility is awesome. They produce great stuff here. And uh, don't listen to her. Yeah, she is. And uh, I like working with her. She, I love interfacing with her. Um, and what else do I love to do with you? I love to take tours through your brewery. So take us for a tour. All right. We're really happy to have you here today, Scott. Yeah, thanks. I love I love how she does that. You see that? She recovers me when I do a bad interview. But uh, the best part of it is um, is uh, great company. Tell us about the history. Well, neither Fordham or Dominion is originally from Dover. Both companies started in separate places. Fordham originally started in Annapolis, Maryland in 1995. Dominion started in Ashburn, Virginia in 1989. And, I mean, Fordham started as a brew pub. Dominion started as a brew pub. And they eventually both outgrew their spaces. Fordham moved here to Dover in 2003. They realized that if they wanted to be able to bottle their products, you really can't do that in a restaurant. And the gentleman who owned Dominion retired in 2007, at which point Fordham purchased Dominion. Um, so that's how both brands ended up here in Delaware, which, l let me tell you, it really sometimes complicates things to not be from here originally. That's cool. But uh, tell me about this pinup thing with Dominion. Was that, is that something new, or have they always done that? 
They have not always done that. The pinup thing actually came about because we're here in Dover. One day our boss was out at the AMC Museum and he came across the pinup art they have on one of their planes. I think it's a C5, they said. And um, we loved the idea. We wanted a way to identify with the community that we currently live in and to, I mean, the style of art is fantastic and it speaks for itself. Our beers are daring. Sometimes they're taking risks and we think pinup art does the same thing. Yeah, and that's uh, C5 Galaxy, because we're really close to the Dover Air Force Base here in Dover. And uh, do you guys do a lot with them? We do a bit with them. Yeah, and that's, uh, you, you support so many different places, uh, uh, Cowboy Up, Sarah Smile Foundation with uh, Jim and Felicia Baker. I mean, so it's, um, you know what, you guys are really great for the community. It's a laid-back environment, and publicly I'd like to say thank you for doing all that stuff. So uh, thank you. What's your next event? We have R2 Hop 2 coming up. That's our beer and music festival we do every year in conjunction with the Dover FOP. Okay, so uh, Jimmy's got us under a time pressure here, so take us to a tour. So we, we'll take you up to the brew house today. Usually we're not allowed to take people up to the brew house because people touch things they're not supposed to. And it's because I'm the limo guy and we get you the access that you need. So thank you, Lauren. I appreciate it. If he touches anything, this interview's over. Oh my God, this is tight, man. This, I'm really getting nervous, okay. All right, so you are up here in our brew house right now. We have a 50 barrel brew house. That's around 1,500 gallons. Our brewers brew two batches of beer a day. Takes usually around eight hours per batch. So our first brewer usually gets here around four or five in the morning. Last brewer usually leaves here around seven at night. So uh, what's the turnover? So this starts today, when does it end? It depends whether you're brewing an ale or a lager. Okay. Uh, and that's determined, well, I mean, it's determined before we start brewing, but when it gets into the fermentation tank, you have the different yeast waiting for it. And if it's an ale, it could be three weeks. If it's a lager, it could be up to 10 weeks. Very, very cool. Okay, so now we're looking out, and what am I seeing here with all these vats here? So this is what, what happens here. So this is the mashing and the mixing. Is this the fermentation, or, or is it... When, uh, like you said, it's a mash mixer. So this is a mash mixer, and then it flows over to, I'm assuming, there for fermentation. Right, but I mean, you've got each of these four separate containers does a different thing. Okay. That mashes in. That's a louder ton. That's where you work on the gravity of your beer. That is the... That was a sneeze. That was a Lauren Bigelow sneeze. Yeah, that's the loudest sneeze I've had in days. <laughs> um, that is the brew kettle. God bless you, by the way. Thank you. And then beyond that, you've got the whirlpool. Gotcha. Okay. And then it goes over into fermentation. So now all of these big vats here are fermentation. That is correct. We have five 50-barrel fermentation tanks, 1,000-barrel fermentation tanks, and five 200-barrel fermentation tanks. Yeah, so now we're what? This is the fermentation tank area here? It is. This is the, where all of the beer is actually made. Prior to putting beer in a fermentation tank, all you have is sugar water. My God, Lauren, this is an operation. This is huge. It's it's fair size, yeah. Fair size. Yeah. There's bigger than this. Oh my gosh, yes. Wow. The beer that we make a year is less than a lot of people spill. <laughs> That's crazy. I can't believe it. And this is uh, because we just left a, like a really uh, small operation, just start, just starting up. So uh, to walk into this, I mean, this is amazing. Okay, so now we're in fermentation. Where are we going to? How long are we in fermentation if I'm a beer, if I'm an ale, if I'm a lager? How long am I staying in fermentation? If you're an ale, you're here usually around three weeks. If you're a lager, you can be here up to 10 weeks. Up to 10 weeks. Although and a lager can be lagered up to six months. We just cut ours off usually around 10 weeks. So, so what are these barrels for? You know, is that, does that go into the beer process, or what are, we, are we doing something different here? That is where we play mad scientist. We'll take one of our beers, put it in a barrel, and hope to God that it turns out okay. <laughs> so it's just pure testing. It is. Okay, interesting. All right, so on from the fermentation area, where are we headed to off to next? We are off to the bottling line. Off to the bottling line. Let's go. We need to meet our two hop two. This is our dry hopper. Jimmy, our two hop two over here. We're going to have to come and get a, a just dry hopper. What does that mean? We use dry hopping and secondary fermentation to give your beer more aroma. It's like Prior to dry hopping, it's like you have a cookie dough that has no chocolate chips in it. This puts the chocolate chips in that cookie dough. Okay, so we finish up in fermentation, then we, do we do any processing before we get bottled? You have to filter it and pasteurize it. Filter it, pasteurize it, and then run it through this system here, which is the bottling system, right? Down for maintenance, uh, and on a day like today, we would be running pretty hard, wouldn't oh, we? Yeah, we'd be doing about 100 bottles a minute. 
A hundred bottles a minute. Yeah, no, a minute. Yeah, that's correct. A hundred bottles a minute? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, that's do we the have, answer. Do we have to go to uh, R two D two or C Thrapio? What was what was that? Meant? The dry hopper. I'm I'm sorry. Sorry, R two hop two. He'll have that answer. But uh, so I I mean I see product everywhere. This is great. And so I mean, you guys are pumping it out. Yes, we are. We did about twenty four thousand barrels last year. Twenty four thousand barrels equates to how many cases? I could not answer that off the top of my head. I can't believe it. I I, I finally ever stumped. And you know what? The weird thing is I was lying awake in bed last night thinking, I don't remember how many cases are in a barrel anymore. Well, I sure don't know. <laughs> but hey, um, Lauren, listen, thank you so much for having us today. Um, it's always great to see you, and it's always great to sample and taste. And I didn't have any of the alcoholic beverages, right? That's a shame, yes. And so good. We have that for TV. I had, I did have some of the root beer, which is absolutely delicious. And, um, you know, can't wait to get back and see you again. Thanks. Here's the last place, and this is an awesome one. This has got some character. This has got some interesting people working here. I got to say, we got a pirate. We're going to go. We're going to talk to Eric here in a little bit. We got Don, one of the primaries. We got Jared, the brewmaster. Um, most important guy in the room right now is not me. It's Jared. He's the uh, brewmaster. What's going on today? What, what products are you working today? What are you brewing today? Uh, what's your specialty, Jared? What do you well, like today to do? We actually uh, we prep for a beer that we're doing tomorrow called Big Earl. Uh, it's a Black Rye IPA. Uh, it's one of our seasonal beers. We do a new seasonal every month. Uh, in addition to our four year-round beers. And then we're also brewing on our small system. We have a pilot system in the back. Where we do a lot of test batches and experimental stuff. And we're doing that tomorrow as well. And that will be a Imperial IPA. So an IPA, how many tests do you, are you doing? Are you, are you spending more time testing? Are you spending more time developing? Or are you just, you guys are in all-out brew mode now? We do uh, two or three different ones a week. I mean, whatever we come up with, whatever we decide to do that morning is what we, what we go ahead and, and uh, play around with. And that's, that's crazy. Uh, we just finished up at Fordham and Dominion, and those guys got a stockpile of product. And I look around here, and it's, it's lean and mean, and you guys, you guys are deciding that day what you're doing. And that, that is cool. And that's, a, that's an aspect of this whole business, you know, from the smallest guys to the biggest guys. It's still craft brewing, and it's still craft beer, and it's still good stuff. It's, it's made from really great stuff. You guys getting all your stuff local, you know, that you put in your beer or what? Um, most of our stuff that we do, actually, we get through a couple different contractors from out in Midwest and, uh, and out in Yakima Valley for hops and stuff. But we do a lot of stuff with uh, local guys down in Georgetown. He grows any of our uh, herbs and spices that we need, any of our fruits and vegetables that we would use in a beer. Uh, he does for us. And he's also going to be growing some of our leaf hops that we're going to use next year, uh, or excuse me, this year when they come up here for harvest in uh, November, December. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. How long have you been brewing? Uh, it'll be coming up here on three years in August. <laughs> That's crazy. Three years, and now he's working at Mispillion River Brewing Company, and it's uh, it's one of the good ones. And I can't wait to get home tonight and break into my growler. I haven't had any beer all day. I've been hanging around it, and uh, so I've been. I've just. I can't wait to get into it. Uh, and I hear the Aussie the Aussie uh, Pale Ale is really good, so um, I can't wait to taste it. So uh, another guy here is Don and Eric, and um, so Eric likes to talk like a pirate. Is that right, Don? Yeah. He's very good at it. What, give me your best pirate impersonation. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I, uh, but I can't wait to hear it. How did you get involved with Miss Billion River? I uh, met uh, Eric through his wife. His wife worked with my wife and talked about starting a brewery, and it sounded interesting, and we got pulled into it, and I'm glad we did. So it was interesting, but you don't have any history in... No, I don't have any home brewing experience, just a beer drinker. So you're just a beer... <laughs> Switch me to good beer. That's cool, isn't it? And that's... uh can't drink the other stuff anymore. And that's... They say we're destroying our palate, but I think we're making our palate a little better, aren't we? Yeah, very much. Yeah, and I, I can't... I, man, did I say it already? I can't wait to get home and break into my <laughs> Aussie Pale Ale. So, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to talk to this guy, Eric. You know, um, uh, sh sh let, let us hear a little bit of your pirate impersonation. Arr. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets. Man, I thought I was It's all in the look. It's all in the look. <laughs> it's all in the look. It's more look than, than, uh, than actual uh, I performance. Patch. I left my patch at home. So. I left your patch at home. I should have brought my patch, darn it. But, uh, okay, so um, you just decided one day that you were going to go ahead and start up a, a, a brewery. I mean, that's it. You know, come on. Tell us how it happened. Well, 
I had been home brewing for a couple of years and uh, was really enjoying it. Loved the experiment. Um, loved to drink it, and it was um, it was kind of obsessed me at, at, to a point. And uh, I was working for a large corporation, and kind of got tired of 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 you know being a number or not being somebody uh, important. And I said I can I can run a company better and treat people better than that. So. My wife, the way my wife says it is, after our 40th, my 40th birthday, I woke up and said, I'm opening a brewery. So it's Megan, right? Yeah, Megan. And did she think you were crazy or what? Well, she's always been supportive, but I could tell by her response that she was kind of like, yeah, right. <laughs> and that was pretty much her whole response. That's, that's pretty awesome. Thanks, Megan, for doing what she could have been here to be on TV so we could capture that. But <laughs> She's much better looking than I am, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, yeah, right? Thank, thank God we all have uh, really great wives, really hot wives. But uh, you know what? Uh, what, a cool, what a cool operation uh, going on here. Uh, you guys are really... Um, building up a reputation, and your name is starting to be circulated up north. So uh, in Middletown, people are hearing about your stuff and uh, liking what you're doing. So uh, really, keep it up. Uh, but it's just a standard old operation. You're mashing, you're fermenting, um, you're bottling, you're pasteurizing. Do you pasteurize here? Yeah, no pasteurize. Okay, so you're bottling and shipping. So We'll, we'll be canning, actually, hopefully in the, uh, in the uh, May time, you know, late spring. Um, so we can get some of our beer out to uh, some uh, beach goers and uh, beer drinkers in the parks in cans instead of bottles. Cans instead of bottles. And uh, you, can you buy, uh, what is it? Uh, I can't remember. I, I never had any frat boy days. But uh, what are they called over there? Uh, Was, kegs. Kegs of beer. Kegs yeah. of beer. I can't believe I didn't know that. But thanks for educating me, guys. I really appreciate that. Your research is good. My research, yeah. <laughs> You're not a frat boy either? No. You're just a drinking boy. Sorry, no offense to frat boys. I love everybody. <laughs> but okay, let's uh, check out the facility. Uh, thank you so much for having us here. We really appreciate it. Remember, this is a stop on the Good Libations Tour, so make sure you Google search that and find out how to get, how to, get to all of those locations. We hit four out of the five today, and uh, what a great day it really was. I got to say, I uh, can't thank every one of the places that we visited today. Uh, Painted Stave was awesome. Harvest Ridge was awesome. Fordham and uh, Old Dominion, Fordham and Dominion Brewing, Lauren Bigelow, and now with these great guys, Miss Billy and River in Milford, Delaware. Awesome. Thanks, Bill, for coming for the ride. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Lauren. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Remember, don't drink and drive. Always have a designated driver. And uh, we'll see you guys on the Limo Guy at Large Craft Beer Craft Brew Tour. Be safe. Whenever you're doing something like this, guys, please always have a designated driver and get home safe. So it's the Craft Beer Craft Brew Tour. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye, bottles of beer. If one of those bottles should happen.